Hi and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today no matter what it is you're doing. For today's free wire work tutorial I'd like to share with you a graduated beaded bar necklace design. It's made of course in my favourite media which is wire and it's also going to be using some really pretty purple lipid like quartz style beads. Now it's graduated in so much as there are three different bead sizes that's 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter and 4 millimeter and I'm also working with a slightly harder wire today. I love working with raw copper but this design really benefits from having a harder wire so you can either choose something like a brass or you can find a wire which does have a slightly harder temper. So if you'd like to join me down at the board I'll show you slightly more closely the project that we're going to work towards today. So this is the piece that we're going to learn how to work up together today. My five focal beads are in 10 millimeter sizing. I've got alternating beads in a slightly smaller which is an eight millimeter and the six of those and then I have 25 of the smallest beads. Now it's basically your focal beads add one is the number of your accessorizing beads so five focal beads six accessorizing or alternating beads and then there are five of the small beads for each of the focals so that's five of the largest 10 millimeter six of the eight millimeter and 25 of the four millimeter beads now this ratio just works really beautifully you can actually graduate the size up in the center so you could go for 12 millimeter 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter and then use 6 millimeter as spacer beads but you would need to alter the number of the smaller beads to uh, to just basically accommodate the different sizes if you are going to add some graduation it's beautiful no matter how you work it and the design can actually work with the same size bead all the way along. So a little bit about today's wire. I've chosen to work in some non-tarnish brass wire which is much much harder to work up than the raw copper that I normally work with. This is definitely of a benefit because once you've worked this it has something of a memory so it's really quite sturdy which is good on a bar necklace piece like this because it means it will last for quite a long time in wear. So we have to begin with around about 14 inches or so of that one millimeter which is equivalent to 18 gauge and what I'm going to do is start by threading on my main beads onto the main section. So what I'm going to do today is demonstrate with three focal beads instead of five. The action that we're going to undertake will be absolutely the same. You'll just need to repeat the last couple of steps. So for this to work out, we've got accessorizing or spacer beads and focal beads. And I'm going to start with one of the accessorizing. In this instance, it's an eight millimeter, followed by a 10 millimeter, and then just alternating those throughout your design. So as I say, this can be as many or as few of those beads as you like. Threading on beads is not my uh, main skill, I'm not going to lie, even large beads like so. Now this is a firmer wire to work with than I'm used to working with, and it's great because you will end up with something that is very hard wearing at the end of the day. It is just slightly firmer to actually get that to work for you. So you just find a wire that works best for you and add on in an alternating fashion the chosen beads. Now you can of course do this one bead at a time and then add the next one on but I like to see everything in place on my main wire and to stop that all falling off the end you can use a bead stopper which is a little bit like a springy coil or you can just use the very end of your wire to loop over to make sure that those beads do not escape. So today I'm actually using artistic wire non-tarnish brass. It is, as I say, a much firmer temper wire to work with than the raw copper or the medium temper silver plated copper that I often work with. It really does work to your advantage in this particular design and many other designs, but this is one of the first times I've worked with it and I'm really enjoying it as an alternative. In addition to that, the colour is beautiful. Mixing that up with coppers and silvers and rose golds is going to be so much fun. 
So I'm just going to make sure that I don't knock my feature piece. So I'm just going to pop that up into the torn into the top corner rather, so that you can still see the basis of the design, but hopefully I won't knock it flying on the floor. So I've got my little smile of that one millimeter or 18 gauge wire to begin with. And what I want to do is just scooch most of the beads out of the way and just make sure that I have my central bead in position. So whether you've got a two beads, two focal beads either size, whether you're graduating from large to medium to small, however you're playing the game, we want to sit the central bead in the centre of our wire. And I'm just going to push those other beads all the way out of the line of sight. Hopefully they won't get knocked. So I have in my hand now around about 18 inches of 0.8 or 20 gauge wire and this again is quite a hard texture, quite a hard temper uh, and it's the brass non-tarnish. So what I want to do is find the approximate centre of this section of wire and I'm just going to warm the central couple of inches like so. What I want to do is cross them over. So this is the center of the lighter gauge and the center of the heavier gauge. What I want to do is to take the tail that crosses over the top and coil it around that core wire. Now you can move the, bood, the bead out of the way rather but what we want to do is maintain the central section of wire and what I need to do is take that tail all the way around underneath and then bring it back over the top so it's just a single coil on that central heavy gauge of wire I am going to move that up a little bit further so that that sits coiled around the center of the main segment of wire so just to ensure that this sits really firmly I'm going to start one bead to the left now if you're a left oriented person then you may wish to work in the opposite direction but this is going to work best for me. I'm just going to pinch that so it's nice and tight, scooch the rest of those beads out of the way and I'm going to take the tail that's on the left hand side, give that a bit of a warm and draw it over the top. So I'm travelling from the top of the wire to the top of the wire and just encapsulating or encompassing that first bead to the left of the central focal bead. Now ideally I'd like that to be a nice smooth shape, this is quite a firm wire to work with. If I just play with that a little bit and warm it through it will sit really neatly. So the wire has travelled over the top of the central core, around underneath and to the left before coming around. I'm telling you this because I'm going to flip this slightly sideways and then upside down and I need to push down very firmly on this first accessorizing bead or alternating bead and I'm just going to hold that very firmly in my non-dominant hand and wrap the tail of the wire it's come over the top of the core all the way around and continuing on its way and this is going to be how we're going to work all the way through so our softer wire the 18 sorry the 0.8 millimeter or 20 gauge is always passing over the top and it's just running a loop underneath so I'm going to flip this all the way back around now so it is in the correct orientation of how the final piece will be presented the next thing I'm going to do is take the lighter wire and I'm going to thread on five of those smaller beads. Now these are 0.4 millimeter beads. So you can work with really whatever wire the largest wire will fit your beads on, dependent on the bead hole you're working with. So I'm going to thread on five of those and it's five of the 0.4 millimeter beads to fit around a 10 millimeter focal bead. So as I say, this is not my special skill. It does take a little while just to line up those holes. I don't have the best close eyesight in the world, but we're just going to get five of those threaded on and we're going to just allow them to sit on that wire for a second. What I want to do is apply just a little bit of warmth on the next section of wire we're going to work with and this is going to come round underneath our central focal bead. We just want that to curve gently so that it sits in a nice upside down rainbow shape beneath that main focal bead. Now obviously certain beads are very very delicate and what you won't want to do is put too much stress or pressure on them 
creating that curvature. Lipidolite, uh, this is a lipidolite quartz, it's actually reasonably soft, so I'm going quite carefully as I form that curve. It's something that you wouldn't want to do with something that's chalky and fragile, perhaps like turquoise or even a malachite. So I've got this little upside down rainbow now, which sits underneath that central feature bead. I'm going to pinch everything together as I take the tail over the top of the core wire, draw that around underneath. It doesn't have to be completely tight against the bead and continue on its way. So the wire's traveled over the top of the core, circled all the way around, and then it's continuing on its way. So what I do need to do is just make sure that this is nice and tidy. I'm being very, very cautious of my beads to make sure I don't accidentally snap them. I'm just going to turn this slightly on its side for a moment and warm through that section of wire that's just above where the action's taken place where we've just done that wrap. And I just want to get that nice and warm for a second, try and get some fluidity back into it from where I've work hardened it by using it. So that looks reasonably smooth to me. What I'm going to do is repeat what I did to the left of that central focal bead, like so. So I'm drawing the wire over the top over the top of that core wire and over the top of the accessorising or alternating bead, the spacer if you will. It's only two millimetres smaller but it does make it easier to differentiate which ones we're looking at. So again the technique here is to take the tail of wire over the top, wrap it underneath and then it will continue in the direction it was travelling. So pinching very firmly above trying all the while not to distort this central core and drawing that wire over and on its way. So if I just pop that down for a second, you should be able to see the beginning of the piece and how it is going to all come together. So you may already see how this is going to work up, but I'm going to do one more circuit underneath one of those focal beads, and then I will speed through and show you the finished project. When we get to the end, I'll show you how to do those wrapped loops. So I'm just going to thread on one more set of those smaller beads to the left hand side. Let me just pop that back out of the way. And again, for a 10 millimeter focal bead, you will need five of the four millimeter beads. So let's just get those threaded on. I could have speed threaded these. I should have somebody to thread my beads for me. <laughs> so that's three and four and five. Now as I mentioned earlier if you're using different size beads you'll just need to have a strand of the four millimeter beads um, just to get those the right number you perhaps thread them on hold it in position and see how many you need but for the 10 millimeter stone I'm using five of those four millimeter beads so I'm just going to make sure that I don't overly curve the wire before I get that sat into place so I'm very very gently I'm just going to push those beads up and into position and make sure that I'm happy with how that sits before I pinch very, very firmly. And I'm going to take that tail wire all the way around and it needs to continue in the same direction. Now that's a tiny bit loose. So to rectify this problem, I'm just going to draw those two sides together, being very, very mindful of those beads. So if I just drop that down to the board for a moment, of course that's all linked together so I'm just going to scooch that out of the way. You can see how this is going to continue so I'm going to do one more set. Actually I don't need to do another side because you've seen how to do these. What I'm going to do is create a wrapped loop at the end up here in just a moment so I might as well do this last piece. So over the top a nice bit of warmth into that wire all the way around and then I'm going to wrap this I think we're going to go for six times for security's sake. If you're going to continue adding more beads, you've got plenty of wire to work with. So that's four and five and six. This I consider to be the front. So I'm going to tidy up that coiled section like so and cut away the wire at the back. Plenty of excess to play with, don't throw it away, there's lots to work with. I cut the wire enough to make a five focal bead piece because it's what I've showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. 
So you would continue along in the opposite direction, adding five beads underneath and a naked pass of wire over the top. You can add the beads on the top pass as well, but you'll need to up the amount of wire you've added here. So once you are happy that you have added on the total number of beads you're going to work with today, what I'm going to do is just trim away that loop I turned around earlier because it's easier to work if that's not in the way. And I'm just going to show you how to do a quick wrapped loop and an addition of some chain. So I'm going to bring the coil close to the pliers and I'm going to turn that up at 90 degrees before coming in with my round nose pliers, turning a loop on the end, draw the wire all the way over the top. I'm just going to cut myself a small section of chain from my reel, which just exploded absolutely everywhere. Now, if you imagine that this chain has been measured, this is the correct amount of chain to reach all the way around the back of the neck for whatever length you're creating. Add your section of chain in the end, press that loop shape down into position. We'll then need to support the wrapped loop you've just created without crushing that chain, like so. And then draw that tail all the way around. Now you can go for as many wraps or as few wraps as you want. You could simply close up all of those uh, wraps until you've finished. But what I quite like to do is have a coil coming back and over the wrapped loop. I think it adds a really nice element to the design and it also kind of makes it look like your chain is connected to nothing. It's uh, a, just a, a technique that I enjoy. So I'm going to take the tail of that wire. What my advice would be at this stage is get to here, make sure you're at exactly the same stage on the other side bring all your coils into position and once you've got these two lengths of chain encapsulated in the wrapped loop and you've completed the same number of coils on the bar, trim this section to the same length. So you take your tape measure, say, oh, that's an inch and a quarter. Make sure it's the same on the other side because when you do those little coils to cover up the end of your bar necklace, it's quite attractive if they are the same size. And to do that, it's really difficult to guess, try and remember how long that section of wire that created that coil was. You can guess if you want to, but it's an opportunity to up your game really and try to make that look as perfect as possible. So once you've done your coil, you just press that down over the top of the wrapped loop and you've got that completed. So what I'm going to do now is just finish that bar necklace on the second side over on the left, add in another piece of chain, and then I can show you the five focal bead and the three focal bead bar necklace side by side. So here we have the samples of the finished projects. I'll put an ingredients list for both of these into the description below the tutorial, but you can see the difference between them is such I just pop the smaller one above and because I'm working with a slightly firmer wire I can put a little bit more bend into that very very gently of course and that will sit just however you want it to sit and should stay like that for a good long while. So hopefully that gives you some idea of the kind of size of piece that you're getting to make. Of course you don't have to use chain either, you can use basically any threading material that you want to, you can bead it, you can leave it natural. Thank you for making along with me here on the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you've had a good time. I know I have. And I look forward to welcoming you back again very, very soon here on YouTube. I'll be over on Facebook every fortnight at 8pm British time with a Facebook Live event. The page is Gem Hawks and Gems Gem Box if you fancy joining me there. In other news, have yourself a beautiful day and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.